moving to the big city is about to get a whole lot smarter. In 2014, just a few years ago, urban populations contributed to 54% of total global population. That year drove home the fact that more people are living in and moving to cities than ever before. By the end of this year, experts estimate that more people will live in cities than in rural areas, even in most developing countries. So it's about time we start making our cities smarter. The concept of smart cities isn't new. It incorporates a lot of the ideas you see in broader concepts like the Internet of Things and Big Data. But but smart cities give us a great opportunity to see how these concepts might work in the real world. Take lighting, for instance. Right now, AT&T is partnering with several cities, including Atlanta, Georgia, where I live. One of the common aspects across most of those cities is a transition to smart lighting with LEDs. An LED is incredibly efficient, needing a fraction of the energy of most other light sources, and they can last a long time. Even better, a smart lighting system can send an alert should a light go out. That means city maintenance can send a team out to replace a bulb or do repairs right away. A smart city street light wouldn't remain dark for long. You could even go so far as to create a lighting system that's only active when needed. Street lights could remain dark until someone is actually driving down the street or walking on the sidewalk. This conserves energy, and it cuts down on light pollution when no one is on the roads. It's something you couldn't do with a standard city lighting system. Or how about a city's water system? Using acoustic sensors, a smart city infrastructure could detect when there are leaks along water lines. The sensors would effectively listen for the signs of trouble and send a signal if they detect anything. This could help a city spring into action and send a team out to perform repairs before a situation gets serious. Some problems with water lines are so serious that they can cause sinkholes to form, causing millions of dollars in damages and potentially putting people's lives at risk. Smart water infrastructure could also help a city plan irrigation schedules more effectively. Imagine a park with water sprinklers. Rather than have the sprinklers run automatically in all kinds of weather, a smart system could react to local weather patterns. If rain has been following regularly, it might hold back. Likewise, it could automatically restrict water flow if drought conditions are present. Cities are moving toward a smart grid system for electricity distribution as well. These systems give city planners an idea of where people consume the most electricity. It also sends alerts if something isn't working properly. Rather than waiting for customers to call about a problem, a utility company would receive an alert instantly. This cuts down on the time spent in a power outage. And urban planners will be able to use data from smart cities to design areas more effectively. They will be able to monitor traffic patterns throughout the day. In the old days, you'd do this by sending someone out to observe a stretch of road or an intersection. But with smart cities, you can use sensors to collect the data over several days or weeks, look for patterns, and start to plan out ways to make traffic move more efficiently. That ends up saving thousands of people time and frustration. There's a whole lot more to the smart city concept, and I'll go into more detail about some of those features in future episodes. For now, however, what improvements would you most want to see incorporated into the cities of the future? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks to Toyota for sponsoring this episode. If you enjoyed hearing about smart cities, make sure you hit that like button down there and subscribe to the channel to join our forward-thinking think tank.